Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me here on Hands of a Maker. Today I'll be taking you step by step through the process of punch needling. I'll be using my recently released beginner's punch needle kit to guide you through everything you need to know to create your very own punch needle masterpiece. I created this kit to not only teach you the wonderful craft of punch needling, but to also give you an outlet where you can wind down, switch off from the crazy world around you and let your mind be quiet while your hands do all the thinking. So before we get into the making, try and set aside some time when you are not going to be interrupted by social media or the TV. Light your favorite candle or incense and put on some music, whatever makes you feel relaxed. I have a Spotify playlist called Maker's Gonna Make if you want to listen to that. Otherwise, let's get into the contents of the kit. So when you first open the kit, there is some information about my Makers Community Facebook group. It's a place where makers can connect, ask questions and share their work. If you're interested in that, I'll leave the link below. So alongside this instructional video, the kit contains an 18 page booklet, which walks you through the punch needling process from start to finish in both written form and also with guided illustrations. I know that we all have different tastes when it comes to art, so I thought it wouldn't be right to just offer one pattern. So I've included five. They are all a little bit different, so hopefully there's something for everybody. Otherwise, I have also included two spare blank patterns should you wish to design your own. And to trace the pattern onto your fabric, there's a marker, some pins, and some cute little thread snippers, which come in very handy. So I've included the Amy Oxford punch needle in the size 10 fine in this kit. It is made in the US from solid wood and metal and this tool will literally last you a lifetime. It's that awesome. I wanted to include a frame that would not only be your working surface, but also your finished art frame to hang on the wall. So I've hand built these timber frames and stretched them with a special type of fabric specifically made for punch needling, which is called monk's cloth. And now to my favorite part, my babies. I've included all naturally dyed 100% Australian wool. I've hand dyed all this wool using plant ingredients like avocado pips, onion skins, and tea to create beautiful color schemes that are not only lovely to look at, but that have not harmed our environment during the dyeing process. No synthetics here. All right, so that's all that's included in the kit and a rundown of all of the tools and materials you'll need to create your punch needle artwork. If you are interested in the patterns I'm going to use in this video, they are all available for digital download on my website. I will leave a link below, so if you want to check those out, you can. Now let's get into the making. All right, so the first thing you wanna learn how to do is thread your needle. Um, so grab your ball of wool and out the top, you'll see a little bit sticking out. So just pull on this and pull out about a meter of wool. Taking it from the middle of the ball just means that it won't get into a tangled mess as you work. To make it a bit easier to pass the wool through the small holes of the needle, just pinch and twist the end of the wool with your fingers. Now how the Oxford needle holds a wool is through a hollowed out center. And to pass it through there, we start by putting it through the eye hook at the bottom of the needle and pulling it about 10 or 15 centimeters. And then you might need to pinch it a little bit more and putting it through the hole at the tip of the needle at the other end. You'll wanna pull out about 30 centimeters of slack and making sure that the wool is lined up with the groove of the needle. Just pull back and forward gently on the wool until it slides right down the center of the needle and in place. Now make sure you just have about three centimeters of wool at the end, more than this and you're just wasting wool. Now everyone has a different preference in how they hold their punch needle, but a good rule is to simply start by holding it in your hand like a pen. Not too loosely but not too tightly. 
You will get a feel quite quickly what feels most comfortable to you, but always remember that the groove of the needle needs to be always facing upwards. You should always be able to see it. Also make sure that the loose thread of the wool is laying freely on top of your hand. A nice little trick to make punching a bit easier is to use a little box to pop up your frame so your needle doesn't hit the table when you're punching. You can simply use your Amy Oxford punch needle box to do this, it is the perfect size. So now you're ready to get punching. We're going to start by doing some practice stitches on the frame. Don't worry too much about seeing these stitches, we'll pull them right out and uh, punch right over it so you won't even see it. So push your needle into the fabric and flip your fabric over and pull the loose thread of wool out the other side. This just keeps your working side nice and neat. Flipping the frame back over, we're going to slowly pull the needle out from the fabric and just until you see the tip of the needle, you then move three holes upwards and push the needle back in again. You really want to make sure that you're pushing the needle until the wooden part of the needle is hitting the fabric. So at the beginning, you'll want to count one, two, three holes just to keep your stitches consistently sized. But after a while, this will just become automatic and you won't need to count anymore. So let's have a look at the other side of the frame and what's happening with the loops. So what's happening is the needle is pushing the wool to the height of the needle and as you pull back on that it creates and leaves behind a loop which is then held together and in place by the tension of the fabric. So changing direction is quite simple with a small frame like this one. What you want to do is rotate the frame and with your needle fully in the fabric turn the needle so that the groove is pointing in the direction you want to travel and then you just continue on punching. So to go over that again what you want to do is rotate your frame and turn your needle with the whole of the middle part of the needle in the fabric still Make sure that the groove down the center of the needle is facing the direction you want to go and then you can just continue on punching. So once you've done a few practice straight lines, you want to start uh, practicing filling in. So the way that you fill in is in a brick formation. So when you're putting a line right next to another line, you want to make sure that you're punching like you would lay a wall of bricks, so they are staggered. So this will become a little bit clearer later on in the video, but if you are working with your flat stitches as your final piece, then you want to make sure that you're punching close enough together that you cannot see the backing fabric through the stitches. However, if you're wanting the loops as your final side, it doesn't really matter if they're not too close together. They can be a bit further apart because the loops will cover up any gaps that you'll see. So you've gotten to the point where you need to change color or you'll finish the line or shape you've been working on. What you're gonna do now is to slowly pull out your needle until you can see the tip of the needle and with your other hand, press firmly down while pulling the needle up to loosen that thread. Then just snip that off and with your little snippers, just push that thread back into the hole. On the other side, you'll see the loose thread sticking out. Don't worry about these. At the end of the video, you'll see how to clean those up. Changing color is super easy. So just pull out the wool that you don't want to use anymore. Grab your new color and thread your needle exactly the same way as you did the first needle. Then you can just continue on punching where you left off. Remember to pull the loose thread through the fabric to the back so you keep your working surface nice and neat. 
Now it's not going to be perfect the whole way. You will find you come across some problems like a pulled stitch. This is generally because you don't have enough slack on your wool or your wool is actually caught on something. So double check those two things. To fix a pulled stitch, you just want to pull those stitches out and pull back on the wool. So your, the tip of your needle is back at its original point and then you can just keep on punching. So hopefully now you are comfortable with punch needling and you've done a little bit of practice. So once you are ready to move on to the final piece, just pull out all of those stitches you've done and don't throw them away because we will reuse those. You will see that there's some holes left in the canvas. Don't worry at all about these. You will not see them in your final piece. All right, I think we're ready to get going on the final masterpiece we're going to create. So choose the pattern you want to work on. Otherwise, there are two blank patterns that you can design your own should you choose to do that. Just make sure that when you are designing a pattern that you are doing big, bold shapes to start with. These are gonna be the easiest to do if you're a beginner. Fine details can be particularly difficult with this kind of technique. Also, try and use each of the colours equally in your design so you don't end up running out of one. Because we'll be working on this top side of the frame, what we want to do is trace the pattern from the back. So lay the pattern in the centre of your frame on the back with it face down and pin in each of the corners and one in the middle. Then take it to a window or even a light box if you have it and trace your pattern onto the front of the fabric. I get a little bit paranoid that I'm going to smudge my pattern when I'm drawing so I like to work from the top down so my hand doesn't smudge it as it goes. Also don't worry too much if your pattern's not perfect, you will be punching right over it and will not see any of it. I like to freehand a border because I don't mind a little bit of a wobbly edge, but you can use a ruler to do this part. Then just take out the pins of your pattern and take your pattern off your frame. Now you're all set to get punching on your final piece. You can always look back at the colour card um, at the beginning of your patterns to double check what colour goes where and keep that close by so you can continue to do so during the whole process. One of the beautiful things about punch needling is its variety in texture you can achieve. I personally like the flat side look, but if you prefer the loopy side look, all you have to do to achieve this is work on the opposite side of the frame. So you want to be tracing the pattern on this side, the back side, and working on this side. So it's a little bit different, but it's basically the same technique. The only difference really is if you decide to have a pattern that has lettering and you want the loopy look, you just want to make sure that you are tracing it correctly onto your frame. You want to be tracing it backwards and punching it backwards so that when you flip the canvas, it will be the right way. So there is a bit of an order in which you want to punch your final piece in. So the first thing you want to do is your finer lines, your singular lines, and then your small shapes, larger shapes, and then background. What this does is just ensures that all of the detailing is kept intact and you don't lose any of it while you're working. Okay, it's time to get going. So we're going to start with our smaller shapes in the pattern. Um, don't worry too much if you mess up at all because you can just pull it out and go right over it again. It's not a big deal. You won't see it at all in the final piece. So take your time and don't rush it. Making is a process of enjoyment and of making mistakes. So it doesn't matter if you do something wrong, you can always fix it. So as you can see here, I'm starting to get into a little bit of a tight space, which means that it can be a bit more tricky to punch that needle through the fabric. So use a little bit more force and you will get it through. It's just because all those threads are pushing up quite tightly against one another. 
at some point you will come to a bit of a dead end in your pattern. What you want to do is finish that stitch, snip it off, push the thread in and continue on the next free space you need to punch. When I'm filling in shapes, I like to work in a spiral formation from the outline inwards. You can also work in a zigzag lawnmower-like action, so going from side to side, working your way from top to bottom, and that will give you a bit of a different appearance. I personally like the spiral pattern best. If you want to add a little bit of texture to your artwork, you can do so by working on a shape from the back of your frame. You might want to trace the shape onto the frame so you know exactly where to punch, but you just do exactly as you would on the front, but it produces this beautiful textured look. Sometimes, depending on the type of wool you have, it might be a little bit more difficult to punch with and you'll notice that your stitches just keep coming out. If you do find this, all you want to do, and it's a little bit slow of a process but you don't normally have to do it for too long, is punch each stitch slowly and hold down your last stitch in place with your other hand. This just prevents it from pulling out while you're doing a new stitch. Sometimes you will punch a part of the pattern and just think, what was I thinking and need to change that color immediately. So to do this, you just pull out that wool and punch right over with a new color and no one will know the difference. So just continue on punching your pattern until you have finished the entire piece. Now don't rush this, I know we all want to get to the finished piece quickly, but this really is a time for you to slow down and relax and enjoy this moment you have given yourself. So when you feel like you have gotten to a point where you're happy with your finished piece, flip the frame over and snip all of those loose threads off that we've been pushing through the fabric the entire time. I know no one's going to really see this part, but I know that I've done it correctly. Guys, you did it. You have created your first punch needle masterpiece. I am so proud of you and I hope that you love what you've been able to make today. Making is a process and we're not going to be perfect at it to begin with, but what's important is that you've given yourself this time to slow down, relax and get creative. And that is good for the soul and for the mind. Thank you so much for joining me here on Hands of a Maker and letting me teach you the beautiful craft of punch needling. I hope to see you again soon, but for now, see ya.